Hi, my name is Ravi. Today I'm going to perform a quick diagnosis on this Kia Sorento 2015 2.2 liter common rail diesel SUV. Customer complaint is check engine light is lit and low power. Okay, I just scanned the vehicle, just found a one fault code in the ECM. Let's go to the underhood and do further diagnosis. I have hooked up the scan tool already. Let's read the fault code again. Just tap on the read fault code. Uh, okay, here you can see P2563. Uh, turbocharge boost controller pressure sensor A circuit range performance. It's a range performance code. Remember that it's a range performance code, not a circuit code. So already I have hooked up my H score for further test and I dig the wiring diagram for this boost pressure controller system. Uh, let's see what we can find in the wiring diagram. Okay, here is the wiring diagram and this is the boost pressure actuator called electronic VGT actuator. This is the component that we need to deal with for diagnose this P2563 fault. Uh, this is a four wire connection, you can see that and this pink wire has come from any relay from here. So uh, that's sure this is a 12 volt feed for the actuator and next this black wire is straight goes to the uh, chassis ground so it's a ground connection so confirm these two wires are positive power feed and the ground connection for the actuator next uh, these two wires green and orange is two signal wires uh, orange is pulse width modulated signal into the actuator from ecm and the green wire is signal output from the actuator to the ecm uh, actually what I believe this green wire bring a pulse to the ECM accordingly the power generated by the actuator motor Maybe actuator controller circuit monitor how much current consumed by the motor and send a feedback pulse to the ECM First of all, we should measure this positive feed and negative feed into the actuator Actually, I did already off camera using a test lamp drawing high current both positive and negative were okay and had the bright test lamp so positive and negative feeds are okay. Now we need to check these two pulses. In order to do that, I have hooked up the oscilloscope with two channels. Let's go to that test. You can see here that I have already backprobed boost controller actuator pigtail, uh, but it is hard to get a closer look. I will try. Anyway, uh, that is a four wire connector as we have shown in the diagram. Uh, wire colors are match perfectly. Okay, come on, focus. Oh yeah, uh, you can see a uh, better view here, but uh, it's not so closer look. Uh, however, I did the visual inspection and wiring color was perfectly okay and perfectly matched. So I have back probed that green wire and orange wire already. Okay, uh, ignition is on and you can see here that fault code set for the uh, boost controller actuator. Anyway, I would like to clear this fault code and uh, see what, what is going on. Here I uh, touch on the clear fault code and it shows uh, successfully cleared. But you can see it is still not cleared. It is still there. So I go back and uh, read fault code here. You can see same fault code is appearing here. And I go back and I will try to clear it from here. Clear fault code. Okay, oh, it's just completely uh, cleared, but let's see again, read fault code, but that is here. That means we can't clear this fault code. It's a hard fault. As soon as we cleared the fault code, it's set back. Anyway, let's go to the test. Uh, you can see signals are rolling on the scope screen here. I'm using Edscope hardware and software, which is amazing on automotive diagnostic. Especially it has very helpful measuring tools and functions. On the screen, yellow trace is actuator feedback pulse to the ECM and the green trace is pulse width modulation signal from ECM to the actuator control motor. Here you can see 12% of pulse width modulation going on. Uh, you can see here I have already used pulse width modulation measuring overlay on the yellow trace which is an amazing feature on the H-scope. What we can do next is go to the bidirectional function in the scan tool for ECM and activate this boost controller actuator. While actuation going on, we can observe scope signals and how they are responding. 
with that method we don't need to test run or even engine start so you can see here there are two options for boost control actuator 5% actuation and 95% actuation so we can use these both options uh, before that i would like to apply that pulse width modulation measuring overlay onto the green trace too uh, that will make us convenient to see pulse width modulation changes now you can see here both channels pulse width modulation measurement conveniently uh, no need to stop the capture and measure it manually okay i go to the bidirectional function and actuate 95 percent of actuation of the boost pressure controller option first okay tap the start here you can see successfully activated uh, now you can see here the pulse width modulation has been gone up for uh, 95 percent yeah that is what we activated through the bidirectional function but do you see this yellow trace signal pulse still stay at around 12 percent that shouldn't be definitely that should be rise up anyway i did not hear any actuation click from the boost pressure actuator that is not a good sign seems to be actuator motor is dead no actuation click and actuation signals feedback okay next let's actuate it with the five percent option and see what is going on okay i tap on the five percent boost pressure actuation option here and then tap on the start button and successfully activated and you can see here that pulse width modulation on the green trace become more skinny than uh, which we see before so but still you can see that yellow trace of the pulse width modulation going on 12 percent which is not okay it should be changed according to the uh, pulse width actuation of this uh, boost controller actuation so this is clear that boost controller actuator motor not make any click sound and uh, not emit a feedback signal shows to motor is working perfectly that means this actuator motor is dead and ecm has set the p2563 fault of boost controller range performance my entire test revealed that ecm and the wiring integrity is okay and had good positive and negative feeds into the actuator so i am confident enough to call on this boost pressure actuator controller and this vehicle need a new boost pressure actuator unit to repair this vehicle actually this would have been more easy call on boost pressure actuator if i were able to find any data feedback in the scan tool for the boost pressure controller actuator feedback signal but unfortunately only i found boost pressure actuator pulse width modulation input signal data in the scan data so scoping this signal was the only method to confirm the fault confidently and efficiently so i go to the backward and try to show you uh, data stream what data available in the boost controller actuation system in the scan data uh, i try to find the boost pressure here so i found just the two data feeds one is boost pressure actuation pulse width modulation and other one is boost pressure so uh, if we select both of them uh, you can see here boost pressure actuation pulse width modulation is 61 percent uh, simultaneously on the scope you can see 61 percent of pulse width modulation so no any other data feed except this pulse width modulation input signal so thank you for watching stay subscribed with us for more diagnostic videos